FTX Racing Zorro. This is a trophy truck style that is in the same wheelbase and dimension as a short course truck, so called, that is very popular. This is not an American market vehicle. There was a similar version that was sold by Hobbytown under the Veta Racing name and is apparently discontinued. I got this one from the UK. This is a ready to run truck. It is, I would say, a beginner spec truck. It's not for competition, not out of the box, and it doesn't have a lot of aftermarket support. This is designed to be more of a scale design. You've got these molded driver figures, you've got beadlock style rims, fully detailed body, a full size actual tire on the back, and most importantly, you have a live rear axle, which is definitely not advantageous for racing. You have a Flysky GT2 rebranded transmitter here. Very standard, does not even have throttle, dual rate, just steering and steering trim and reverse. Very simple transmitter, but this is a beginner truck, so perfect for that. And I think this is this truck is is cool mainly because it's more scale. So let's dive into more of the details. I like to get more nitty gritty and more technical, so it's going to be really boring. Uh, this is definitely just something that I appreciate. I like to go into maybe the whys and wherefores of this design. I think others might like it as well, but not for everybody. This is not. Um, entertainment per se. <laughs> this is not for kids. This is more for nerdy, middle-aged men like me. With a battery loaded in here, nice that they have Velcro straps, by the way, so you can put varying types of batteries in here. Nice damping. I'll drop it a few times, but that's pretty nice. The wheels that this FTX Zorro comes with are surprisingly good. Uh, the material looks cheap. It's just the design. It looks like it's going to be a hard compound garbage tire. This is actually a medium to soft compound. The design is actually a little more, I think, thoughtful than a lot of these aftermarket tires that are on the um, out there. A lot of people get them from Amazon that it actually has a pretty large center groove area, which should help with uh, actual turn, uh, turn in and traction on looser surfaces. So that's pretty cool. On the front hubs, it's a really typical setup. You've got a glass fiber nylon hub carrier, end links, all adjustable, which is cool. And you have a, what I call a captured dog bone or partial CVD. So this side is a CVD captured and then the the side up near the axle right there is just a dog bone in a socket right there. Plastic 12 millimeter wheel hub things, whatever you want to call these. Um, shielded bearing inside and pretty pretty simple setup. But we've got a the rear swing arm here, the lower swing arm, and I like how this is captured. So you've got a hex head bolt with a nut on the other side and then the bottom of this arm is actually closed. It's not open. The reason I like that is because there's um, really there's no way for this to escape either going forward, backward, uh, up or down. There's no way for this to really break through and, or for anything to get caught in here and this is just going to make this that much stronger. So I really like that. That's a nice feature. Another thing that I like is the actual fitment, the spacing that the ball pivot point right here has between, uh, in this gap right here, this channel, is almost perfect. So you don't have to force this in on the WL Toys 1, 2, 4, 2, 3, this one right here. The fitment of the standard shock is so tight. You have to like press this in and get it aligned just perfectly to get it to go into the rear 
lower swing arm. So this is this is not as good. One interesting thing as well is that this has so many adjustment points. I don't know why that this is done. I would love for someone to tell me why you would want and, and have a perfect grid to create this kind of uh, uh, geometry that you would really want to have. Um, also, you have 10 positions in this lower swing arm. Very huge amount of adjustability there. I don't know why you would need that. Another interesting thing here is you have a second set of holes on this hub assembly right here. So you can change your steering geometry. So if you pull like this, the farther that servo goes, the ratio will increase, I believe. And so you'll end up with more turning angle with more um, steering lock. You're going to actually, it's going to start to, it'll have a curve basically. So as you turn, it's going to go like that really quick and you can get some really aggressive turn in. Only thing to uh, be careful of is not to overturn these axles or the actual servo itself sets your endpoints so you don't damage the servo. Servo is a standard size servo. Probably just a fake brand <laughs> made somewhere in China. They've got a S ESR1 sport on there sport that sounds really good the servo saver is not adjustable it's just a a fixed spring not crazy about that <sighs> so hopefully that's not too soft if a servo saver is too soft it, it just if you're going through rough uh, terrain or you're trying to push through a turn or manipulate the car through a turn get to get oversteer understeer it, this is this is something that's great for bashing. It's great for newbies, but as you hopefully get better at driving, you might discover this is an annoyance. Um, sometimes you can actually fix these by using a soldering iron. Set it to about 500 degrees, and then this little joint. See if I can zoom in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture that. This little spot right here, you can kind of see the seam just right there. You can take a soldering iron and go back and forth between that and basically weld it together. And that should improve things. The ESC right here kind of looks like the generic Reedy ESCs that everybody uses. And then they just put their own name on it. Nice. It has uh, jumpers for LiPos as well as NIM NICADs, so that's cool. Don't know why it has a Tamiya connector still in 2022. It was made 2021, apparently. Waterproof on-off switch. Looks like a dust debris resistant receiver box, which is pretty cool. Little attention to de detail here is I like that they secured things down, zip tied it down. Everything's pretty well stuck in place and look how they oriented them they put the zip ties with the same ends facing up and clip the excess off that's nice that's a little touch this is not fastened down as far as i can tell it looks like it's probably just a, some kind of double-sided tape motor is a uh, 550 brushed motor they've popped a heat sink on which is cool and this kind of looks like it should have holes drilled in it so you could attach a fan but there aren't any holes, so I guess you would drill your own. The gearbox, as far as I know, there is no gear reduction, just the actual pinion gear from the motor to a spur gear right here on this main drive shaft area. So there's there's really no fancy stuff going on in there. Pretty simple setup. And I will say, even on the WL Toys, even though the main spur gear here is plastic, you can run a ton of power through it and it has no issues. The, um, these are 32 pitch gears, I believe, inside, and the coarser teeth don't seem to have issues like the 48 pitch or, um, you know, the finer ones. So that's, that's good. The front shock tower is pretty small. I'm just thinking that this, this just does not have a lot of weight over it. Uh, but the material itself, while it is, looks pretty petite, 
it's pretty rigid. Um, it's, that's pretty stiff. It is integrated. Yes, it appears to be integrated into that front differential casing. Yes. So this is all one piece. So if you break your shock tower, you have to replace the differential case as well. That's not that great. Right here, I can actually see, I'm just noticing the glint finish work on this piece right here. The molding and the finish work is not there. It's just, there's sharp, there's some sharp edges. So not the highest quality there. You compare that to something like the ECX Torment right here. Similar design, not a really big, heavy duty shock tower, but this is quite a bit more rubbery. So I like the rid more rigid setup. Again, for the price, this comes with a full underbody protection system. This is definitely an extra. This is made with not glass fiber nylon. This is made with just a nice plastic. So it's pretty flexible. You have some little standoffs right here for the body. And these are pretty important for side impact. But the result is that the body itself feels very rigid. Feels very sturdy. You've got these little molded drivers in there. And the stickers aren't too badly applied to these guys. So this is all screen printed, um, all these nice designs, and then they've pre-applied all these decals. Again, very well done overall. Lots of cool fake <laughs> fake uh, sponsors. Not Firestone, but Firestorm. Not, um, <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's supposed to look like Sparco, but it's something else, Eparco, HPZ. And of course, don't forget N and M oil filters. So still nice designs, nice little details to make them look like they're little reflectors in those tail light fixtures. And then a real replacement tire on the back that you can actually use. Nice detail, very nice overall. Front end, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Kind of looks like a maybe an old Hyundai or something. But uh, not bad looking. Nice looking design. Not exactly like uh, super scale, but more like a NASCAR body than anything else. Just like an approximation of what a car would look like if it was actually a car underneath. Small but subtle detail. The openings for the front. They're slightly flared out on the inside to make it easier to align them. Um, one thing I didn't point out, the body mounts themselves, they're screwed onto the body and then there's rigid fixtures all the way around. So for the rear and then the front. It's pretty interesting. So, and there we are. Nice looking. And of course, we've got Bill Bricktop driving. Bill Br Bricktop, you know, he's the best. <laughs>